here we will see the second part of the malaria in which we will discuss about the lab diagnosis of malaria so in any lab diagnosis we have to first see the collection of the specimen how will we collect the specimen first to send the specimen to the laboratory so first we have to collect the specimen so the preferred specimen in for the suspected case of malaria is a capillary blood which is collected from the ear lobe or by the finger prick so two sides from which the blood is collected in a suspected patient of malaria are the ear lobe and the finger prick these are the two sides from where the uh, blood is collected what is the time of collection bro so the preferably the specimen or the blood is collected few hours after the paroxysm of fever because after the paroxysm of, uh, during the paroxysm of fever there is rupture of the rbc's release of uh, toxins and that's why their fever occurs so if we collect the specimen and then uh, after the rupture new cycle begins and different changes occurs in the rbc's by which we can detect the parasite so if we collect the blood after the paroxysm of fever then the parasite would have would be developed would be will be in a developing stage in the rbc's and that or those developing stages can be detected uh, quickly so that's why we prefer the prefer to collect the specimen few hours after the paroxysm of the fever then uh, this then uh, in the laboratory we tend to do the the first thing we do with the suspected case of malaria is to produce a thick and thin smear so two thick and two thin blood smears are uh, produced and this production of thick and thin blood smear is the gold standard for the diagnosis of malaria and what stand do we use here so uh, these these uh, smears are stained with the ramanau sky stains like lisman stains or the Jimsa stain. These are the two stain by which we stain the smears. And after that, the smears, after the smears are stained, the smears are examined under the microscope. So at least two hundred oil immersion fields are examined for a smear to be declared negative. If uh, if uh, before uh, reaching up to the two hundred oil immersion fields, if we detect any parasite, then the smear will be regarded positive or will be reported positive but even after comp even after examining 200 oil immersion fields if no parasite is detected that means the smear is negative so the cutoff is 200 oil immersion fields okay the cutoff is 200 oil immersion fields we have to do the examination of 200 oil, oil immersion fields next thing what is done in the laboratory is the fluorescence microscopy so next thing what is done is the fluorescence microscopy where the blood smear is made on a slide and it is stained with acridine orange that smear is stained with the acridine orange and then it is examined under fluorescence microscope then the smear is examined under the fluorescence microscope so uh, the, what is the concept behind this fluorescence microscopy the concept is that when we use the acridine orange then the parasite which is within the rpcs those parasites get stained and they produce brilliant green color so if we stain the blood in a in the specimen from a suspected malaria patient and if the patient really has malaria then the uh, parasite within his or her rbc's will be stained and they will be producing brilliant green color and by that we can detect the parasite and similar to the uh, sim or based on the same mechanism we have one more test that is called as the quantitative buffy coat examination so the concept is same here also what is difference the difference is that here we do in a this test is done in a capillary tube while well, that is done in a or on a glass slide so quantitative buffy coat examination the procedure is 60 microliter of the blood is taken in a capillary tube and the capillary tube is already coated with the 
a credin orange from inside okay so after taking the blood in that internally coated a uh, capillary tube the capillary tube is centrifuged as a result of which the different components like platelets bloods rbc uh, wbcs rbcs and plasma they get separated according to their densities then the then the capillary tube is examined at the buffy coat where the rbcs are located again the parasitized rbcs are stained with the stain and they can be detected if present at the buffy coat so again see here the color is same brilliant green they produce brilliant green color and by that color we can detect those parasites the advantage of this quantitative buffy coat examination is that it is faster and more sensitive is that it is faster and more sensitive while the disadvantage is that it is an expensive test and it is a less specific test other than that what more test we can do in the laboratory is the antigen detection by the rapid diagnostic test kit rapid diagnostic test kit to do the to do the rapid test so by for that we use the rapid diagnostic test kits and these test kits are uh, available in the market okay so uh, and this is a very important short note also so this rapid diagnostic test kits for malaria is also sometimes given as a short note in the exams so let's see about this test kit this is a diagram of a test kit uh, see here we uh, the test kit looks like this uh, like this strip and there is a sample window where we put the sample there is a test line one test line two and there is a control line so the rapid diagnostic test kit look somewhat looks like this strip okay so uh, here we detect the antigen of the parasite so what do we uh, need to use so that's why we use the antibodies so antibodies are coated in these uh, wells okay antibodies are coated in these wells test line one test line two and when we add the sample here then the antigen moves from here to towards test lines and as they meet to the antibody if the end if uh, if the antibodies against those antigens are present then the test line one will become a line there will be a line at the t1 site uh, and uh, similarly if the antigen and antibody matches then one uh, line can be formed at t2 line also okay so that is how a uh, line is formed uh, at t1 or t2 lines test lines on the strip so uh, what antibodies do we use so we use the parasite ldh parasite ldolh and the histidine rich protein 2 hrp2 which is uh, which is the short form and this uh, hrp2 is very specific in detecting plasmodium falciparum because this hrp2 is produced only by the plasmodium falciparum while plas uh, plas parasitic ldh and parasitic ldolase they are produced by all the plasmodium plasmodia okay be it plasmodium vivax ovale or malaria they all produce this uh, ldh ldolase but this hrp2 is produced only by the plasmodium falciparum so uh, this is very specific in detecting the plasmodium falciparum okay so uh, see the principle is that uh, the test kit this is a test kit the test kit has two parasite detection line and a control line these are the two parasite detection lines and this is the control line test line one is coated with the antibodies specific for hrp2 so in the test line one t1 there is antibodies coated uh, and antibodies coated those antibodies are specific for histidine rich protein 2 while the test line 2 is coated with antibody against pldh plus uh, parasitic ldh and the parasitic ldolase so the procedure coming to the procedure so what is the procedure the procedure is that a drop of blood which is mixed with the buffer solution provided with the test kit and then 
the drop of blood mixed with the buffer solution is put on the sample window as a result the antibody antibody moves along the nitrocellulose membrane remember the test kit has a nitrocellulose within it so antibody need some media to travel now so that's why there is a nitrocellulose membrane over which the anti uh, antigen travels okay antigen uh, travels so uh, as the antigen travels it meets to its corresponding antibody at different test lines remember we have seen the test line 1 and test line 2 so as the antigen moves it meets with its respective antibody at uh, test line 1 or test line 2 based on the antigen what is present in the patient's blood now if the uh, anti if hrp2 antigen is present then it will meet its at antibody at the H uh, test line 1 as the test line 1 is coated with the antibodies against HRP2 and if the patient's blood is containing uh, parasitic LDH or paras parasitic LDOLase then it will be meeting its antibody at test line 2 because test line 2 is coated with the antibody against the parasitic LDH and the parasitic uh, LDOLase okay so based on that the test lines will be produced on the rapid diagnostic test kits now how will we interpret once the test kits are uh, once the test lines are formed on the test kits so if there is a band formed at the test line one then we can surely say that the plasmodium falciferum infection is there because the test line one is coated with the hrp2 and that hrp2 is produced only by the plasmodium falciferum so we can specifically say that the infection is with the plasmodium falciferum but if the band is at the test line two that means some other species infection are there either it is plasmodium vivex or ovale or malaria uh, but one more point is that if the test lines are produ produced at both the test lines if band is produced at both the lines t1 and t2 that means there is mixed infection there is mixed infection means there is infection of plasmodium falciparum along with vivex malaria or falci uh, or the uh, ovale okay so that is mixed infection why do we give the control line control line is given to uh, to determine the validity of the test if the control line is produced that means the test is valid if the control line is not produced that means the test is invalid we cannot uh, rely on the results of from of that test if the control line is not produced if the band is not produced at the control line we cannot rely on that test so that is the advantage of the control line for the validity of the test now coming to the advantages of the the advantages of the rapid diagnostic test kit so the advantage of the rapid diagnostic test kit is that it is a highly sensitive test okay and its sensitivity increases if the parasite load is more than 100 parasite per microliter of blood then its para, uh, then its sensitivity increases furthermore prognosis can be assessed because uh, that prognosis uh, you know is based on the intensity of the band so if the intensity is decreasing that means there is good prognosis the parasite load is decreasing also we can determine the severity so severity is also uh, directly proportional to the intensity of the blood if the in intensity of the band over the test kit is uh, very much then the severity is also very high but if there is uh, if the band is of light color then the severity is low okay that is the advantage of the rapid diagnostic test kits and what is the disadvantage it is a relatively expensive test kit and cannot differentiate between the non falciparum species that means it cannot differentiate whether it is ovale uh, malaria or vivex however it can determine or uh, uh, differentiate between the plasmodium falciparum and other species but non falciferum species that is ovale malaria and vivex it cannot differentiate between those non falciferum species that is one more disadvantage of that rapid diagnostic test kit so rapid diagnostic test kit is a very important short note for the uh, university exams so be uh, get it get it prepared now coming to the 
next uh, uh, method in the lab to diagnose the malaria that is the molecular method which is present in almost all the in, in diagnosis of almost all the cases almost all the diseases uh, i mean infective diseases so yes follicular method is definitely there for uh, malaria as well in which we detect the gene of the parasite and by that we can detect the infection now coming to the uh, prevention so remember prevention and control of malaria is done under national vector borne disease control program nbbdcp the prevention and control is done under nbbdcp and under these under this uh, nbbdcp there are six diseases those six diseases are the malaria chikungunya dengue filaria japanese encephalitis and kalazar so out of these six diseases five leaving the kalazar kalazar is uh, transmitted by the uh, flies sand flies so leaving that all other five diseases are transmitted by the bite of the mosquitoes so the mosquito control is the most important method for the prevention and control of any of these five diseases so if the prevention and control is asked for any of the five diseases like malaria filaria dengue chikungunya and japanese encephalitis then remember to write this uh, sorry these two points not vaccine vaccine is not available for all the five diseases but these two points are must to write in all the five diseases because the prevention and control can only be possible if the vector is controlled for these five diseases that is mosquito which is mosquito in case of these five diseases so the anti mosquito measures and anti larval measures we can use these two methods so anti mosquito measures are spraying ddt to kill the adult mosquitoes and the reduction in contact between the mosquitoes and humans by using bed nets repellents etc this is one method or uh, one anti mosquito measure okay then anti larval measures are there uh, in which we can uh, kill the larva by putting mineral oil on the oil uh, in the on the water surface and reducing the breeding ground of the mosquitoes by preventing stagnation of water uh, anywhere or in open spaces or uh, on the roof of the uh, houses okay then we have the larvicidal feces uh, with like gambusia which can eat the larva of the mosquitoes so by this method we can prevent the is um, prevent the uh, you know breeding of the mosquitoes or the number of mosquitoes decrease the number of mosquitoes in the locality and by that decreasing the number of mosquitoes in the locality we can decrease the five vector borne diseases which are very common in our society now there is uh, no vaccine available uh, in case of the malaria but the results are being seen with the rts s slash as01 so results are seen but uh, no approved vaccine is uh, available till date so this is all about the prevention and control of the mosquito so here we in our lecture of the malaria in which we have read about the lab diagnosis and the prevention and control